Hey everyone. Now I recently got some uh, more roller shutters for another room in my house here and they're controlled by this little control box here. So press the button, the battery in the uh, control box there, which is what it is, um, sends power up to the motor so it can drop the roller shutters. Now that's all good and well, but one thing I don't like is the cable that hangs down here. Because if it's one thing I don't like, it's visible cables. So what I'm going to do is conceal that cable in the wall. Now the unit itself is just the receiver for the remote control, a couple of buttons on here and the battery. So that's what actually powers that thing. The, the, the power connector here is just to charge this unit. Okay, so you don't need that in there to run the system. You can see it going up there now. So I can use the system without that cable plugged in because again, it's just powered off the battery there and it'll run as normal. So the way they installed it, when they put the tracks in out here, the cable from the motor uh, comes down the track here and then they drill straight through the mortar and then that cable comes into where the control is. So what I'm going to do is pull this off the wall and run my own cable up through the roof and down to a power point so I don't have this business coming down here. Now these usually have a nice finishing piece of plastic on here to put on after they screw it in the wall but the guys who did the install said it's a pain to get off so I just said leave it off because I'm going to take this off anyway and I'll put it on later when I'm done. So for now I'll just take this off the wall and look at the back of it. That's what the back of it looks like. Just the two wires that go up to, to the motor and obviously the two from the, um, the power adapter here which is the two that I'm going to use when I run my cable through the wall. Okay, I can see where they've got the cable, it just comes straight through, slightly down towards the outside, so they've drilled up from the outside. Um, but I'm just going to come at this angle and go through there, and hopefully I'll get to that open area. Okay, it felt like it went through. I'm just going to use a coat hanger to see if that uh, actually went through to an open area. And whoever invented wire coat hangers should have got a, a Nobel Prize use these things for anything. Right, well, I was hoping to, to put a loop of cable through like that and then they give me something extra to fish it up with when I get up in the roof but I really don't have the room so I'm just gonna have to put as much of this down there as I can and then when I hook it up hopefully I'll just be able to get enough up there. That should be enough, I've put heaps in there. So where I'm gonna bring that out eventually is down here where the speaker cables come out. So I've already run that for the speakers that are up there and I could use that as a draw wire if I really want, but I don't really want because it's all neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the snake up there. Just shove the snake up the wall and then pull that cable back down once I get attached in the roof. Okay, that'll be close to the top. I'll just find it when I get up there. Here's my other snake with a hook on it, also from a coat hanger, specifically for this sort of thing. So I'm going to go up the roof and try and fish that cable out. Right down here is the cavity that I was talking about. Um, that run. Obviously the other cables, speaker cables and antenna and shit. So this is where I'm going to try and hook this cable up. So I'm going to get up there and look down there. You won't be able to see it so I won't bother recording this. I'll just swear a little bit until I fish it up here. Okay, my first attempt didn't work because behind here is sarking between that and the gap between the wooden part and the brick part. So what I've done now is I've just got the coat hanger and punctured some of that... Um, so it goes directly through. So I can feel the brick wall with this now. So I'm just going to tape a bit of the coat hanger that's rigid to the cable that's not, just to start it to make sure it goes through that sucking hole that I just made, and then I should be able to get it. Oh, let's see what happens. Okay, I got that wire taped up to the top of this. So all I should have to do is pull this out here and see the end of it. And there it is. Okay, I got the multimeter held on there with a bit of tape, as you do. So I've just got that here that I'll try and keep an eye on. Let's see how much current this thing draws. Alright, I'm going up now. Almost two amps. Two amps. Oh, struggling. Three amps. Then you just kind of left the ground. So it's taking the full weight of it now. So three amps. 
This is of course going up. Which I'm going to assume would be harder than going down. It's nearly at the top. Okay, that's up. Now I'll go down. Yeah, just over one amp. It's got gravity helping it out. But I like to know these things, so now I know. So what I'll do is I'll solder this wire to that connector as well, just where the existing wires are soldered. Just take this to the door so I can work on the bloody thing. That'll do. Right, and I've got my two wires there ready to go. New one on. So it needs a bit more solder. To do the trick. Okay, you can see what I've done. I've just got this new cable here and soldered it to where the existing ones soldered to that connector there. Now I've just got to carefully put it back on a wall and never move it again. Normally it has these covers on, but they told me that these are a real pain to take off, so I got them to leave them off because I told them I was going to do this uh, cabling and then I'll put that on. So I'm not going to put that on until I know everything's done and it works so I can just put that on and never look at it again. So for now, I'll just make sure the main part still works. And I now know that's drawing 3 amps when it does that. Because I like to know these things. Right, another check is to check this power still works. Yep. That's still fine. And I'm also going to check that the red is positive, which you know, you'd think so, but Stranger things have happened in this world. Okay, another check I'm going to do is just to make sure the red is positive. Because I've seen stranger things happen, and it is positive. Flip it around, and I get negative. So, okay. So I'll take this out of here. And uh, attach this to the other end of that cable. Okay, so here's the power adapter that I'm going to connect to the cables here. So I don't need that anymore. Off you go. Before I start, I'm going to put some heat shrink on the cables. Let's cover that when it's done. Do heat shrink. I'm going to strip the ends of this and find out which one's positive. Which should, it's generally the one that's got a marking on, but this has got markings on both. It's got writing on one and a line on the other. But I'll just measure it. Might take the battery out of that other end before I do this as well. I should do. Not going to go anywhere. Just trim the excess off. Put the heat shrink up over there. Cover it up nicely. I say nicely. Okay. And I'll just get the heat gun under that. And just give that a go with the heat gun. And it'll shrink onto the plastic. Alright, so that's joined up now. My new cable going through the wall to the power adapter here. So I'll plug it in and see if the thing comes on. So I put the battery back in because I had that out while I was doing that. I'm going to turn this on. That should come on. There it is. That's a lot neater than having the cable hanging off it. For now, I'll just Shove that back in the wall. And now that I know that's working, I'll put this plastic cover back on. Well, on for the first time. It's all neat. 
I've got another window nearby with one of those, so I'm going to do the same thing. And I might even run it off the same power adapter, because that power adapter is only for the charging circuit. It's not actually driving the motor, so it's not what's supplying that 3 amps. Those power adapters are only um, half an amp, because they're just for the charging. So that should work for a number of those units. All right, that's all neat and tidy now. There's no cable hanging off there. So uh, checked it. Still works. Everything's good. So that installation's finished. What I'll do now is have a look at the RF from the remote controllers because I know some of you guys will be interested in that too. So I'll do that now. Okay, now I've recorded me uh, pressing one of the buttons, the down button, and I recorded that with GQRX and I've just opened it up in Universal Radio Hacker. So with this, I can, you can see the, the background RF here and this is where I press the, uh, the button. Now if you look at that, you just see the, the amplitude of the RF changing. But what it can do is show that as demodulated. And here you can see it as pulses. So when there was RF, that's like a, a positive pulse here. And what you can see is there's some preamble here, which is just, let's call it ones and zeros here. Uh, one zero, one zero, one zero. That's just so the uh, receiver can sync up to the transmitter there. And then we have the actual code. And uh, where that code is, you see it, it's highlighted down the bottom here. So I'll start at the start. Where I highlight one and zero, you can see it highlighting the corresponding RF up there. And if you go along a bit, you'll see that it does that preamble again about here. And it does it again. And all in all, it does it eight times. So you can sort of see from the pattern there that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is all good and well for this, uh, the binary down here. What I'll do is um, I'll just copy that and just paste it here. So you can see where it starts that 1010 um, that I just showed you and then you get the code and at some point here it's going to do the 1010s again which looks to be around about there. So if I do that and I just split it you can see you can see with the exception of that final little one on the end uh, they all look the same. So you can see the eight repetitions there. What I can also do is view that instead of bits just view it as hex which makes it a bit easier to manage so if I do the same thing just paste the hex you can see where it repeats here with the with the A's so same thing just viewed as hex and the reason it's, it's saying A's obviously is because 1010 is A so you can see A A A and then the rest of it so this is the code that it sends out for that one button but I did a bunch of recordings and I'll show you them now. Okay, so here's a whole bunch of different takes that I did, a whole bunch of recordings. So you can see you still have the preamble in all of them, and you have some common parts here, and then I've split it up into a little bit of decoding that I think it is. So with the down button, I just press that four different times, and the bits that change is the bit on the end, and that's the rolling code, so that's different on every single button push. So you can't just capture it and replay it and do it. Same as garage doors and car remotes. Um, but these bits here are interesting. So when I press um, the different buttons, these bits change. Um, so you can see what they are. And on a different channel of different controller, when I press down, we're back to the same that we had up here when I press down. So the down on all of them is the same. Same as the stop. The stop is D52, D52, D52. And again, all the rolling codes are different here. And this, this column here seemed to be the channel. So I used channel one there on one controller. Then I went to another controller and used channel one. But then I used channel two, and that went up. So if you view that in binary, you'd see that as well. And uh, so if I just scroll up, that was pretty much what I figured out. So down, stop, and up, the channel, some stuff at the start, and then the rolling code. Now, theoretically, I should be able to match my own software controller to the to the blinds because I control the blinds I control when they learn stuff but um, I don't know how to do that don't have the algorithm how to do that even though it's probably findable um, but that's not really something I'm interested in doing maybe one day but there's a bit of the code and, and how to look at it in Universal Radio Hacker there's something else I noticed about these two when I had to listen to it there's actually a little pulsing sort of noise that it makes if you listen real carefully and they all do that um, they don't have to be on charge to do that so I'll just try and record that sound so you can hear what I'm talking about I'll record it in here where it's quiet and I'll use my headset microphone 
a tape to it and see if that picks it up. All right, look, I tried to record this, but it didn't come through, so you just have to take my word on that. All right, so that's it for the install. It's all done, and uh, cable's all hidden away in the walls and concealed nicely. Now, I'll just give you a tip about listening to electronics, because they do make noise sometimes, and you want to pinpoint issues, usually with capacitors. Um, but if you've got a circuit board and you can hear noise coming from it, and you want to pinpoint it, an old-school trick is to just use a screwdriver. And just stick that end in your ear, and with the other end, just tap on the components until you hear the one making noise, and you'll know which one it is. Anyway, that'll do for now. Until next time, take it easy.